Hi and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to cover my latest blood test results. For those of you that follow the channel you'll notice that I'm in slightly different surroundings. I'm back in the Philippines. Hopefully this time there'll be no earthquake or there'll be no typhoon so I will be able to continue broadcasting. I have tried to find a time of the day when it's quiet. For those of you that visited the Philippines or maybe somewhere in Southeast Asia you'll know that every teenager has got a motorcycle without a muffler. Um, all households have got small yappy type dogs that don't shut up all day and all night. Most men over the age of about 12 have got a rooster. Again, it doesn't shut up all day or all night. And lucky for me, my neighbour has a cow that tends to bellow most of the day and most of the night. So if you do hear those noises in the background and they annoy you, I apologise. If they do remind you of times you spent in Southeast Asia and you're happy about that, then I'm happy too. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the spreadsheet and let's look at my blood test results for the 7th of October, 2022. So let's quickly cover the supplements I was taking at the time of this blood test. Uh, NMN, 1.5 grams a day. Trans resveratrol, 1.5 grams every other day. Um, TMG, 1.5 grams. Berberine, you can see in red, because I didn't take berberine at all during this period. Um, the blood test I had prior to this, I managed to convince my doctor that the blood sugar levels I've got were had me in the pre-diabetes range, um, but not diabetic. And as you know, most doctors are not willing to prescribe metformin until you are actually diabetic. So not really a good uh, philosophy in my, in my eyes. She said she would start me on 250 milligrams per day of metformin as a preventative. So... Um, Again, I wasn't taking that either during this blood test. I was not taking berberine or metformin. Um, and when we come to my blood scores, you'll see the difference in my blood score because I'd stopped taking metformin. Vitamin D3, uh, 5,000 international units per day. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms per day, and that was the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams a day, and that's the L3 and 8. Hyaluronic acid, and that's a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid 200 milligrams a day quercetin 2.4 grams a day and again i only take that the first second and third of each month fisetin 2.4 grams a day again first second and third of each month only and dried parsley one teaspoon of that mixed into my yogurt every day um, but remember my um, trans resveratrol has now gone down to uh, once every other day so three times a week sometimes four times a week maximum four trans resveratrol so that's my supplements uh, the supplements I was taking during uh, the time of this blood test so as before as I go through these I'm only really going to highlight things that are either out of the reference range or are close to one of the limits or have gone back into the reference range or out since the last time so let's look at my lipid profile uh, 7th of October total cholesterol high 202.1 that said the upper range is 200 so that's that's not that far up. HDL, 62.67. The range used to be 35 to 80. For some reason, they've now changed it to 60. So had it been the 35 to 80 it's been since October 2019, that would still be blue. I have no idea why they've now reduced the upper end of the reference range by 20. Someone might be able to tell me that. LDL, <clears throat> which the uninitiated call... The bad, bad cholesterol, mine is 131. The upper range is 130, so I'm only uh, 1.7 over, so not really that much to worry about. And again, I don't worry that much. Um, talking about LDL cholesterol, I'm going to play a clip now by Sean Baker, who um, talks about a very large study that took place in Korea and looked at the optimal range for LDL cholesterol. Let the cholesterol be where it is. Remember, I showed you guys a study from... Uh, South Korea, 12.8 million people looking at all-cause mortality and cholesterol. The most beneficial or least likely to die group were those that have total cholesterol between 210 and 249 milligrams per deciliter, which is much higher than places like the American Heart Association would recommend it be. So interesting times. Uh, remember, the science is often wrong for you, the, 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 the follow the science people. And so maybe this new study is wrong. Maybe the old studies are wrong. Hard to say. Moving on to my triglycerides, this is one that does need to be kept low. Uh, anything less than 150 is good. 79.71 is good. It's down well below that. It's also down 
from last time, which was 91.50. VLDL cholesterol, which again, I think is the bad cholesterol, should be uh, anything between 5 and 40, mine's 15.9, which is, I think, is very good. Um, TC, total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol ratio, should be between 3 and 5, mine is 3.2. Uh, an LDL HDL ratio, for some reason they've changed the metric again. They're now saying it should be less than 160. Mine's 139, so call it 140. That's well below that. So that's it for my lipid profile. Let's move on to my blood sugar score. You can see here my blood sugar level was 6, and three months ago it was 6. Bear in mind what I said earlier, which is that I stopped taking berberine here on 11th, 12th, 13th of June, maybe a week after that after I'd spoken to the doctor. Um, I took berberine because I was under the impression that it had similar properties to that of metformin for controlling blood sugar levels. You can see here that although here and all the way from the beginning, since the 19th of October 2019, and prior to that, I was taking berberine, um, these numbers have remained fairly constant, fairly um, level. I stopped taking berberine within a week, so maybe the 16th or 17th of June, for three and a half, well, for two and a half, maybe three months. This number is exactly the same. So for me, may not be the same for you, berberine has made no change whatsoever to my blood sugar levels, which is very disappointing indeed. It'll be interesting to see what happens when I fill this column in three months' time, how this number changes after I've been taking metformin. Average blood glucose, 126, same as three months ago, and that's still in the fair control category, which I'm more than happy with. So that's it for my blood sugar. Moving on to my liver profile. The only thing that's out of range here is my globulin levels. Um, that said, they're up from 2.11 to 2.22, um, and getting much closer to 2.5. Globulin, one of the reasons... Um, one of the main reasons this number may be low is dehydration. And although I'm in the Philippines now, um, three months ago in the UAE, which is when this was taken in October, it's still very hot, indeed very humid. So as we move into the winter months, and the next one's going to be November, December, um, hopefully this number will, will come down. So that's it for my uh, liver profile. Moving on, let's look at my renal profile. You can see here my, my blood, urea, nitrogen, my bun number is in the red. That said... 23.4 is below 25, which is what it used to be. But you can see here that for some reason, they've just changed the reference range. They've dropped it now down to 22.60. That's a question I'm going to ask the doctor. Why have they changed it? Because if it stayed the same it was as it was, three months ago, it was only 0.5 over. Now it's down to well within what was the reference range. So I wouldn't have worried about it at all. My uh, bun creatinine ratio is 23.2 which is high but then 23.1 is the upper limit so it's only just over so um, not particularly worried about that thyroid these again all within reference range so no issues there vitamin d down from last time 55 that said well within the sufficient range i'm not sure if because it is the hotter time of the year i'm not spending as much time outside on my bike as i used to um, so maybe i might start taking Instead of 10,000 milligrams twice a week, I might now up that to 10,000 milligrams three times a week and 5,000 for the remainder. So that's it for vitamin D. Vitamin B12, you can see three months ago it was in reference range, but was at the lower end. Um, it's now 505, so back well within the middle of the reference range. Uh, as I mentioned, the last uh, blood update, um, much to the chagrin of the vegans, I'm going to start eating a lot more red meat. And I'm assuming my B12 is going to start going up, which it has. So I'm happy with that. That's it for my vitamin B12. Let's move on to my testosterone. You can see here that it's up to 455.12 from 390. So quite a jump there. Um, I'm not sure, but these two numbers are from one laboratory. And all these numbers prior to that are from a separate laboratory. So I don't know if that's the reason. Also... These numbers aren't given to me in nanograms per deciliter. They're given in another metric, and I've got to convert it. So I don't know if that might be the reason why. But 455 is still well within the reference range. The upper limit is 788. So I'm happy with that for a man of my age. Had my free testosterone measured again. Um, 
Last time was August 2021. You can see here um, it's up to 15.75. 40 is the higher limit and the higher is the better because it means that testosterone is free and allowed to do all the things it should do. If people know a way I can naturally increase my free testosterone, I'd like to know that. So please let me know in the comments below. Iron, well within reference range, no issues with my iron. Homocysteine, again, nothing wrong with my homocysteine score. I am happy with that. C-reactive protein, again, anything less than 3 and 0 0.37 is down from last time, which was 0 0.71. Moving on, my lipoprotein A, well within reference range. Anything less than 30 is good. Uh, it's actually gone down from 13 to 7, which I'm happy with. Apolipoprotein A, uh, 1, B, and also the ratio, again, all within reference range, so I don't have any problems or issues with that. Amylase should be between 28 and 100. Mine is 68, so it was 70, so it's down slightly, but still well within the reference range. Lipase, uh, they've changed the metric here. It should be between 73 and 393. 134 is at the lower end, but is within the reference range. Fructosamine, they don't tell me that anymore. Uh, blood, all of these, and you can pause this, but all of these blood scores are within reference range, so I'm not issues. I've not got any issues with that. Blood two, this one, uh, I won't try to pronounce that. The reference range is 0 0.04, and mine is 0 0.02, so that's down again from last time. I will need to find out from my doctor what that is. And if it's linked to any other marker, not just a standalone marker, if there's any problems or anything I should be looking into. Urine, everything there in reference range. So I've got no issues with that. Again, feel free to pause it to see which one is which. EGFR, which is kidney disease. And I'm led to believe that anyone of my age will have some kind of kidney disease. I've got what they call a mild decrease. You can see, though, since I've started, it's been, apart from this 94, which I think is a bit of an outlier, it's been in the 84 to 82 uh, range, went down to 75, which is good, but nothing to be concerned about as far as I'm aware. Uh, again, I'll talk to my doctor about my EGFR. So estradiol, which is the measure of my estrogen, you can see here in June, um, which was just over three months ago, it was 41.1, and the upper limit is 40 so that was high now my doctor didn't seem too worried i wasn't too happy about that because estrogen much like insulin is a fat storing hormone um and at my age i don't want to be storing fat so i did actually take a supplement and you can see that i've dropped it from 41.1 down to 30.8 which is quite a significant drop um i didn't start taking this immediately so it's probably happened in about two months maybe 10 weeks maximum um, I'm going to make a dedicated video about this supplement because I think it's an important subject and I think men of my age or people who follow the channel may also want to be dropping their estrogen level because high estrogen in men is not good. That said, this supplement, although it, it doesn't block estrogen, it balances the estrogen and the testosterone in your body. Ladies can take it again because obviously they don't want their testosterone being too high. So as I said, a, a dedicated video on how I managed to drop my estrogen from 41.1 to 30.8 coming very soon. So that's it for my estradiol level. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, I'd be interested to see what your comments are on my blood test results. Um, I was particularly interested by me stopping berberine for three months and it appearing to have absolutely no effect whatsoever on my blood sugar levels. And I'd be interested to see what they are in three months after I've been taking metformin for those three months. The other one I was particularly interested in and keen and happy to see was the drop in my estrogen levels by 10 points. Uh, and again, the supplement that I use, I'll be doing a dedicated video on that because there's benefits to taking it. I'm going to talk about the, the side effects, the dosages, etc. Um, so that video will be coming very, very soon. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.